Hello friends, this is Ramesh Sharma here. So today in this video, we are going to create a Chrome extension. So I will tell you how you can create your first Chrome extension, and we are going to create Chrome extension that is manage tabs. So we are going to manage the tabs of Chrome Windows using that extension. So we can make any tab active, or we can remove any active tab. So here you can see that I have the extension here. So I have opened two tab here. First is new tab and extensions. So you can see that we have two tabs listed here, and I am under the extensions tab. So that's why it is active. And second tab is unactive. So now let's make the second tab active. So when I will click on this new tab text, so then this will make this new tab active. and i can even close this tab and i can even close this extensions tab so let's go back to the extensions and here let's close this new tab so when i'm closing this new tab so you can see that our new tab is closed successfully so this basic extension we are going to create today in this video so now without wasting any time let's get into coding section so i have already opened the empty folder in the vs code here and you can see that the folder name is project so now first of all we have to create the manifest.json file so in the manifest.json our whole data of the extension is there so what files we are going to using and all the information about the extension will be in the manifest.json file and this one is the most important file of the chrome extension so we have to create this So let it be manifest dot json and here first of all we have to mention the name of the extension so let it be test extension or manage tabs extension like this and then its version will be zero point one and after that here we have to mention the description here so this extension what it will do so this extension allows you to manage your tabs you can uh, see all the tabs open and then uh, for the particular window so for the particular window it will show uh, of the chrome and then uh, you can active the particular tab and you can delete the particular tab So now here we have to add the manifest version as well. So now we are going to use manifest version three. So this one is the new version of the manifest. So here uh, we have to use the service worker here. So instead of uh, in the background, so we are going to use the service worker. So our service worker will be background dot js. And after that, here we have to mention the permissions. and now let me tell you what is a service worker so this service worker will be independent of all the tabs and the web pages so as we have used the background or js so you can uh, see that you can uh, understand that this will run in the background so we have the background key and under that for the background we will be having the particular service worker and now here we can get all type of permissions so we have to pass that in the array so permissions can be tabs or can be the web url or it can be the windows it can be downloads so you can ask any type of permission you can ask the storage permission as well from this but for now we are just going to use tabs here so now last important thing uh, so we have to mention so we have to mention the action as well so but i will tell you later so why we need the action here also so first of all let's add the content script here so we have to add the content script as well so that will depended upon the particular web page particular tab so uh, this will manage all the front end all the dom manipulations so as you can understand that is content script so it will manage all the content of our chrome extension so we can add the pop ups here so what is a pop up so like when you will click on the particular extension so one web page will open so one web page will open so 
So let me show you. So like we have this extension here, React Developer Tool. So here you can see that this pop-up is opening here. So this pop-up. So you can see that this page doesn't appear to be using React. So this pop-up is there. Now this pop-up is there. So this is the content script. So this is a content script and this one is the default pop-up. So it changed automatically according to the content script. And now when I will enable this one and you can see that here it is not having any pop-up here. So uh, that action is for the pop-up and then uh, we have the content script as well. So content script is to manage everything. But here it is taking the help of dev tools. So that's why it is not having any content script. This React Dev Tools. So I'm closing this one. So let's go to the coding section. So here, this matches means that. So we have the matches here. So we can have many content script. But for now, we are just going to use one content script. And you can see that it is having the matches. So matches in the matches, we can uh, represent the URLs in which this will be compatible. This extension will be compatible. So now uh, I'm mentioned here all URLs. So this means that it will work on every URL. And the entry point is index.js. So here we can mention all type of JavaScript, CSS, HTML files, and then how it will run. So it will run at document start. So whenever the document will be starting, so at that time it will run here so document start here and for the action i will tell you so how you can add that type of ui pop-up here under this one so first of all let's create the background first background.js and then here we are going to write index.js so that is for the our content script just save this so here we are not going to write anything for now so let's go here so here now simply go to the browser chrome browser and go to the chrome extensions so this interface will be there so if you are not getting this so you can just click here go to settings and under that just click on this extensions here now here what i'm going to do so here we have the developer mode here now we have to load the unpacked extension so for that just click on this one developer mode now you can see the options here so just click on load unpacked and now you can see that i am under the folder create your first chrome extension and project so i have to select this project because our project folder name is project and then simply click select folder so you can see that we have the manage tab extension version 0.1 so this extension allows you to manage your tabs. Everything is coming there. So now you can see that we have the inspect views also as we are under the development. So you can see that we have service worker and here you can see that we have the unpacked extension sign as well. So now let's, it is already enabled. So let me pin this. Now you can see that we have this one we can remove it, unpin it and manage our extension, but it can't read or change the site data. And it also, uh, we can manage the tab extension. Now, here, when I will inspect this, so you can see that just go to console and in the console, nothing is coming because uh, we have loaded the extension successfully. We don't have any errors but we haven't added in the content script yet. So all the things that will show in the console or in the particular web page, so that will be done by the content script and other all background purpose things like background things that uh, our extension wants. So that will be done by the service worker. So now let's move forward and let's start creating our extension. So before that, let's uh, install this pop-up here. Let's show one pop-up page so that we can create the UI first. 
So here you can see that I am under the content uh, script index.js file. So here just write console.log console.log hello world here and now to update it you can just click on this refresh button or click on update button now here you can see that we don't have anything here but when i will refresh any page uh, not this page any web page i will refresh so we are getting hello world here so we are getting hello world so this means that our content script is also working but when we will write console log in the background so this background will not show anything because it is running in the background it will not depend upon any tab so now let's first of all add the ui here so for that let's go to the manifest.js and here what we have to do so here uh, we have to add one action here so action and in that we will be having the default pop-up so that will be our html file pop-up.html so I just create this pop-up.html here just write html snippet and we will write here with h1 hello world so just save this and you can see that we are not getting anything for now so now what we have to do is so we have to just reload this and now you can see that we are getting hello world here so this is very interesting so we have the pop-up so we have the particular ui and we are getting hello world so we are getting hello world here just reload this and you can see that hello world is there so now uh, what we have to do so we have to add the js file uh, for this pop-up as well so now how we can add the js file for this pop-up so now uh, let's see that so for that what we are going to do here so here we have to mention the popup.js file so that is here it is popup.js so we have to create this now uh, here just I am writing just go to the popup.html and here we have to link this file here so using script.source so we will be having the popup.js just save this so now just I am adding the console here so console.log uh, this is from popup.js popup.js just save this and now I am going to reload this and just reload this extension and you can see that we are not getting anything so we are not getting anything here so this means that it is not even recognizing this popup.js so now how it will recognize so here we have to mention the popup.js here so popup.js file so in the content script so this means that it will recognize the popup.js file as well so everything we have to mention in the manifest.js file so here just click on update and now just reload this and now we are getting this one from popup.js this is from popup.js file now it's very interesting so now here let's just create a simple ui instead of this h1 i'm going to use h5 here or let it be h6 and here i will be using manage chrome tabs just save this and here i will just reload this and now you can see that we are getting this manage crop tabs so now here you are wondering that its size is not good so now we have to add the size of this pop-up as well so for that we are going to create css file so that will be style.css and this css file we also have to mention in the manifest so for that here we are going to create this css and here this will be style.css so just save this and now we have to add this we have to link this file here as well so that will be style.css just save this so now uh, we have to add the style here so just add the style for the body 
so for the body uh, we have to add the margin here width here so that is maximum width so what maximum width will be so let it be 350 pixel and maximum height so we want the maximum height here so maximum height will be like 400 px here so now just save this so just reload this here so you can see the changes in the height here so actually this is not working uh, so width width will be 350 pixel and height will be 400 pixel so just save this reload this so we should get the changes in the height so now you can see that we are getting the changes in the height so we are getting this manage chrome tabs and you can see that we have the change in the height here so here instead of this h6 so let it be h2 just save this reload this and now we are getting this manage chrome tabs so So we don't have to use a line here so just uh, i will not focus more on the ui so here uh, what we have to do <coughs> so here i will be using br tags so we will be having two br tags here and here i am going to use id so for the ol the id will be extension tabs and under this we are going to mention all the tabs so all the tabs will be added here so that we are going to do with the help of dom manipulation and from the popup.js so here now let's see if we have any access to chrome dot tabs here just save this so now just reload this and let's see if we have any access so we are getting it undefined so we are getting it undefined here so now uh, first of all let's see uh, let's add the event listener to the window so window dot add event listener so that is dom content loaded so if dom content is loaded so what function will be there so what function will be there here so here uh, we have to add the chrome tabs here so for that uh, first of all uh, just I'm writing the console here so console dom fully loaded so just update it and just reload it so you can see that we are getting dom fully loaded so dom is fully loaded and it's passed so we are getting this so now uh, let's console the chrome just save this and update it now we are getting here load times run time and many things we are getting so just right click here so this can change on all sides so we have this site access so that's great so now uh, let's first of all get the ol here from this one so that is tabs data uh, so tabs will be there so we will be having the document or query selector and we have to select from id so extension tabs ext tabs so that we have mentioned here just save this so now we have to get all the tabs here so here we will be getting the all tabs so that will be the array and then here we are going to push the query here that is chrome.tabs.query and then from the tabs we are going to push all the tabs in the array and after that just we are going to console log all the tabs so that we are going to do it from here so console.log all the tabs so just save this so now let's see what we are getting here so we have some error so that is can't read the properties of undefined so this means that we are not getting any access to this chrome.tabs so let's see how we can solve this error so this error is because chrome.tabs.query is not working so chrome.tabs is not working in the popup.js 
but it should work uh, so the this chrome dot tabs will work on popup dot s dot js and it will work in background as well so now we are going to use second method so we are going to use second method so we are going to send the message from popup dot js to background dot js so background will run chrome dot tabs dot query so it will give us the array of all the tabs that is present in this window so now you can see also one thing here so you can see that width of this content is not good so you can see that its width is not full so this means that so when we will go to the coding section again and here you can see that in the content script we have css written so this means that it is applying CSS globally. So it is applying CSS to all other websites also. So first of all, let's remove this one. So it should only work for our pop-up here. So it should only work for our pop-up, pop but it should not affect any content of the website. So for that, we have to do only one thing. So just remove the CSS from content script and use the CSS in action instead so just save this so now when we will update this and we will reload this so now you can see that this website css is now good and this is also working for the popup.html now let's move forward so let's send message to the background.js and let's get the list of all tabs so Let's see how we can do it. So we have to go to the popup.js. So here, instead of this, what we are going to do, so I'm going to remove this all. So let's remove this. So here, I'm going to send one message here. So how we can send the message? So we will send the message with Chrome runtime. So here we are going to use chrome.runtime.send message. So we are going to send the message and our message will be get tabs. So as we want to get all the tabs here, so just I'm going to console log the response. So console log the response and just save it. So now this message will go to the background. So we will listen this message to the in the background or JS. So for that, what we will do. So here we are going to take the help of Chrome dot runtime dot on message so we have on message here so here we are adding the listener so here we will check what is the type of the request so what is the type of the request here so you can see that in the popup.js i have sent the type here so that is cat tabs so that's why whenever the message is coming to the background.js so it will every time listen on this one chrome dot runtime on dot message and here we are checking the request type. So if the request type is get tabs, so then we are running the query here. So we are running the query and it is sending the response. So we are sending the response and we also can get, you can see that we have the sender here. So with the help of sender, we can also get like what is the URL from which the request is sent. So like this type of thing we can get. So here we are sending response back and that response we are getting in this callback function and we are consoling the response. Just save all and let's see the changes so we should not get any errors. So you can see that we have some errors here. So I'm going to clear this, these all errors and let's update it. Update it and rerun it. So now you can see that we have two tabs opened and we are getting two tabs in the array. So this thing is very good. So you can see that URL is Chrome extension and second URL is this one is the so that is Wikipedia. So that is current one and it is active and that tab is not active. So now let's see how we can do the DOM manipulation so that we can get the list of all tabs here. So now DOM manipulation is very easy. So first of all, you can see that we have all tabs. So we are going to move the response to all tabs here so all tabs dot push and we are going to push the response or uh, 
as it is constant so that's why we are going to push here and we are iterating the response so otherwise we what we can do so we can make it as let and after that we can use all tabs equals to response as responses array now we have tabs here so we have tabs here so you can see that when i will go to the popup.html so we have tabs so that is ol so here all the tabs will be added so we are going to run a for loop now so let's do that so that for loop we are going to run from the response only so response dot for each and here we need the index of the tab as well so that will be good and now here we are going to create one element so that element will be so here we are going to create the tab element so that will be li so document dot create element as we are using unordered list so that's why here we are going to use the list item so then it's text in a text will be tab dot title and after that we are going to add the on click listener as well so when the user will click on this so this should make the tab active so this will make that tab active and here we will also write if the particular tab is active so then what we will do so here we will write if tab is active so if tab is active then we are going to add the class so that is one it will be active class so i like active class and for that we are going to set the border so let's go to the style.css so let me first of all do this so here we need the index as well so here we are going to write index plus one so index plus one and like this tab dot title just save this and here we have the active class now after the for each loop what we are going to do so we are going to append in the tabs so tabs dot append child so that will be the tab element so tab element is the so here actually that we are going to append in the for loop only so just save this so now let's update the changes and reload the extension so we have the error so that is append child and the property is null okay so it is not able to find this ext tabs so we have this ext tabs okay so now what we are going to do so i am going to cut this and instead of that i am going to get the tabs here so let me console log the tabs so let's see tabs Save this so let's see what we are getting uh, so actually we are getting this as null okay so we are getting this as null so now what we are going to do here so now let's change one thing so let's go to the manifest and let's change the js uh, so here it is good yeah we can change the js here as well so we can add the js here as well popup.js so let's see what is the effect uh, not to remove update it so it's still null so we have some issues with DOM manipulation so let's see how we can solve it so actually DOM manipulation is not working because we have added run at a document start so this content script will run at when the document will start but we don't want to do that so i'm going to remove this so as we have implemented here so that is window.add event listeners when document is loaded so then only we want to run this so just save this and we can remove this from here as well just save this and now when i will update it and i will check this so you can see we don't have any error and we are getting that is extensions and the title is wikipedia and you can see that when i'm clicking on it so it is making that tab active so i'm clicking on this one so it is making that tab active 
so now let's add some styling with the help of CSS here so first of all you can see that as we are using order list so we don't have to use this one and two here so we don't have to call the index so for that I'm going to this one popup.js and I'm going to remove this so just save this and update it reload it and now you can see that it is working perfectly now let's add some CSS and make it more better so here I have added some CSS here you can see that for ally I have list style type none and in the popper.js I have added index plus one also here and then padding font size cursor I have added and after that border radius and also margin and for the active tabs I have added the border here so now when I will update it so you can see the changes here so that is here we have active tab so when I will click on the Wikipedia and then we have this Wikipedia as active tab so now let's see how we can remove the any tab here so to remove any tab so we need uh, here double click so I will add the functionality that so when the user will double click on anyone so it will double click on this one so when user will double click on this one so it will remove that tab so that thing we are going to do so now let's do it so I'm adding like this because I will uh, not focus on the UI mostly so I will tell you the functionality how you can do that later on you can uh, add the UI as well so you can add one badge here you can add one badge here for active and inactive so when the user will click on that badge so then it will make that tab active and then you can add this cross icon here as well so you can add the cross icon here so when the user will click on that cross icon so then it will remove that tab but instead of that cross icon so I will take the example with the help of double click and with the single click it is making tab active and with the double click it is removing the tab or we can do alternatively so we can do alternatively so when user will click on the any tab then it will remove that tab otherwise on the double click it will active that tab but we are not going to do that so we will follow the simple procedure on simple click tab will be active on double click tab will be removed so now let's add the functionality for the double click as well so first of all we are going to add the functionality for double click so here tab element dot add event listener so add event listener and here it will be double click so double click will be there so we will be having the function and in that we are going to remove the tab so chrome dot tabs dot remove and we will be having the tab id just save this so but here uh, we don't want to close the window uh, so if you want you can also close the window here so as this window door close means so whenever uh, we are clicking here so this is closing this window so here now let's click on update and here let's go here so let's remove this tab so click double click here so I think we have error we don't have any error so double click so actually it is not working uh, so let me do this save this and update it double click you can see that when I double clicked on this one so it is removing the tab so it is removing the tab so let me again open that tab and here I will double click on Wikipedia again double click so first time it is actually I have added one click as well so that's why it is uh, first of all taking first click and I have to double click on this one double click on this so you can see that our Wikipedia is getting removed so you can 
make this UI more simple. So when uh, the user will click on the active batch, active batch, so then uh, user will be able to make this active. And when the user will click on the clo close button or delete button, so then only it will be removed. So you can do that here. So uh, for today, this is enough. Uh, so let's uh, do that thing as well. Uh, so before closing this video, so let's do that thing as well. So here, let's create one element as well. So that is P. So let's create that element. So we are creating that element. And here, instead of that, P dot inner text will be like this. P dot inner text. And after that, we are going to add one more thing here. So that is P. So for like, let it be div. Uh, so let's create the close element here. So close. So I will create a button. Document dot element create button. So if the class is active, so when the user will click on the P, so when user will click on P element, so instead of tab element, I'm going to add the P element here. So when the user will single click on the P element, so then only the user will make this tab active. So this means that when the user will click on the P tag, so when user will click on P tag. So here I will go to the style.css. So instead of this one cursor pointer here implementing the cursor pointer here so i will implement the pointer cursor to the p tag and here i have the button so here there will be the event listener on the button so when user will click on the button so then this will happen so here what we are going to do here so we are going to first append uh, so first of all, we have to add the inner text as well in this one. So button dot value. So let it be close, close tab. And then we are going to append the element. So we are going to append B and we are going to append button here. So just save this. So now reload this. So we can see the changes here. So you can see that we are getting one button here. So when you can see that when user will click on this P tag, so it will make that tab active. So let me bring Wikipedia again. And you can see that our Wikipedia is active. So when I will click here and you can see that it is making this as active here. So now we have this remove button. So let me add the inner text as well. So inner text, close tab, update it. So you can see that we have this close tab button. So when I'm clicking on this close tab, so you can see that it is making this tab closed. So it is making this tab closed, but you can see that this one is this, but this tab is not removing. So now how we can remove this from this content. So for that, it is very good. So it is very good. So it is very simple. So what we have to do here so we have this tab element so just we have to remove that tab element tab element dot remove just save this so now i'm bringing back that again uh, here actually we have to update it now you can see that this one is active here and let's make the extension active and here we are going to close this wikipedia close this now you can see that it is very real time so now in this video you have learned and how you can fetch the tabs and how you can create your first Chrome extension. So you can create this UI mode better. You can add more functionality and we will be having more videos regarding this one as well. So we will also get to know like how to create extension with the help of React as frontend. So for today, this is enough. If you have any queries, please comment in one section. I will definitely respond to that. At last, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe it and share with your friends. Thank you for watching.